only one of you can admit anybody who is coming in because I may not be able to see the people as I'm presenting. So once again, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining for the session of Azure Power Lunch. Um, and uh, the, our topic of today is Microsoft Android for customer. And as I said before, this call is being recorded. We place our recording uh, in our um, YouTube channel. So if you don't want to be recorded, you may want to drop off now. With that, let's start with our topic of discussion, Microsoft Android ID for customer, just like we always do. We are going to be um, talking about what is the what is this service? What are some of the key feature, FAQs, and of course, a demo. This topic, we will probably cover it in, we will need one more session to cover completely, but let's see. Um, so first of all, what are, as you know that um, Entra is now the Microsoft Identity Platform. It has um, Entra ID, which used to be Azure AD. And under that platform, you have different ways to uh, address external identity because Entra ID or Azure AD is for an organization's identity in the cloud, like your company or your customer's company or those employees, their identities in the cloud. That's what um, Entra ID is all about. And if they have partners or they have external vendors, they want to give access to that's where Azure AD B2B or B2E comes into picture. And then you have the Azure AD B2C if they have their own customers. So let's say it's an e-commerce company or a fast food chain, uh, which is uh, allowing people to order online or any other business where they want customers to sign in to um, you know, give access uh, to some information, things like that uh, or whatever. In that case, they need uh, to have like an uh, identity portal, and that's what Azure AD B2C is. That's what it allows you to do. Um, so what we are doing, what Microsoft is doing with, um, with Entra external ID is combining these identities under a single uh, name. So these are all external identity. This is this feature is currently in public preview. And just keep in mind that not everything under it is in public preview. For example, Entra B2B, that is there that you can use that is available. Entra B2C, that is there. Microsoft Azure AD B2C, that is there. That is not going anywhere or kind of taken away. But you have something called now Entra ID or Entra external ID for customer. I know it's it's uh, some it seems like a bit confusing. So that's the new product which is in public preview. That's its Microsoft Entra ID for customers. OK, and what it does is it provide a customer identity and access management solution for uh, organization that want to build customer facing portals. You know, they want to build they want their consumer to access certain services, certain information. They want to provide self-service registration, um, you know, sign-in experience, all those things. And kind of similar capabilities that you may have seen with Azure AD B2C. Uh, so why, why this new service? Um, the reason is, to take advantage of the investments that we make in Entra ID. So Azure AD B2C is a platform and it's kind of a separate platform than Azure AD. And some of the features that are becoming available in Azure AD, we are not available in B2C. With this one, we are kind of bringing them to parity where you will have the same feature set that you have for Azure AD where applicable or uh, Entra ID will be available for um, this service as well. So that's the goal of uh, this um, new service. And as I have said before, that this service is in public uh, preview. So let me just, yeah. And I want to head on, uh, take these some questions head on. So go to the FAQ to so just clarify some of the things. So first of all, 
is it a new name for Azure AD B2C? No, it is not. It is Azure AD B2C is a separate product. If your customer is using it, there are some very large customer who are using it. They should they can continue to use it. OK, it is not going any. Um, it's not being deprecated or anything. This is a new offering. Microsoft has external uh, entra, um, external ID for customer. That's an that's a new offering. OK. That and that does not uh, um, kind of uh, it's not a rename of Azure AD B2C. Okay, just keep in mind that the B2B offering in the external ID remains the same. You can use it. And since this thing is in preview external ID for customer or entry ID for customer, this there is no charge for it. You know, since it's in preview, so there is no charge for it. How long we are going to support uh, the Azure AD? Uh, sorry, how long we are going to support Azure AD B2C platform? Uh, Microsoft remain committed to fully support it as long as it's needed. So there is no uh, kind of a timeline when this will be deprecated. SLA is there; it will remain unchanged. So then comes the question: Where should I go? Should I use this new offering, or should I use the uh, Azure AD, AD B2C offering. Okay, so that's a good question. And that uh, the answer, it depends. For example, if you are ready to go and you need a B2C solution, then Azure AD B2C is an option for you. It is right there. It's GA, it has SLA, all of these uh, things that are needed. It's in, um, as I said, it's in GA, so you can take advantage of it and you can move ahead. If you are um, starting, you know, uh, building a new application and you just want to evaluate this um, entry external ID for customer, that's a good solution for you. You can start with it and take advantage of a new innovation that's coming with it. And by the way, I have um, attached and uh, put a link in the, if you look in the resources, there is a link to a uh, um, resource, uh, which is basically uh, announcement of this service uh, at the Ignite uh, timeframe, I think. Uh, oh, sorry, build timeframe. So please take a look at it. In, in that, they're talking about um, kind of uh, more of the roadmap detail, what can happen, like they will provide ability to migrate when the time comes. Uh, if the customer wants to migrate from B2C to uh, this new solution, once that solution is GA. So all of that stuff is covered in that session. So, and they have, uh, they're planning a lot of stuff, a lot of things to simplify. And, and, and that's the reason for this uh, new service. I'm sure, and I think we have talked about B2C in the past and identity experience framework and how you have to kind of edit XML. And that was not, uh, every developer doesn't want to do that. You know, I, I mean, you know, then there were some ones, if you, something breaks, it was kind of, uh, you have to troubleshoot it and all that. What they have done is, they're going to simplify that experience to kind of a low code, no code. So you don't have to do uh, any of that XML uh, stuff and you can simply quickly build your identity um, patterns and, you know, kind of uh, uh, like a uh, what we call like a sign up, sign out uh, process, all of it without using any XML. So they're, they're they're trying to simplify it. The goal is for the developers to quickly start building application instead of bogged down by the complexity of XML and implement, you know, and uh, complexity of the platform. Let's put it this way. So that's why they're coming up uh, with this uh, new service. Any questions? So with that, let's quickly go into what 
uh, Android ID for customers contain. It has a directory, just like as usual, where all the accounts, either the accounts that are created through app registration or local accounts, they're all created uh, or exist. And then you have app registration, same thing. App registration concept is the same as an Entra ID. Allow you to attach your app or integrate your app with Microsoft Entra. User flows, this is how the self-service sign-up, sign-in, and password reset experience that you enable for customers. There are extensions which allows you to uh, enrich your metadata. So for example, let's say that there's an organization that have uh, some sort of a, um, you know, like a frequent customer or some customer promotion that they want to add. I mean, if that customer is uh, a frequent flyer status or something like there's a gold customer, silver customer, things like that. So they can, and that data is not stored in Entra, of course, it's stored in their CRM system. So this allows, these extension allows it to create custom authentication method and add uh, claims uh, to your user flows. And then uh, you have different sign in method. Of course, you have user ID password or Google or Facebook. At this point, these two uh, are added. And of course, managing your encryption keys and things like that. So that's what it contains. So as I said, the goal is to make the make building of your applications easier to quickly get on with your application without being bogged down by uh, complexity of the platform. And that's what they're uh, trying to do. And hopefully you will uh, see that in the quick demo. And this is kind of more of a future looking statement that um, you will be able to customize the, not only the sign and sign experience, the branding, and um, you will have similar experience if you do kind of any type of customer um identity that that you um, deal with so that's um you know any uh, any type of app can be a single page app or a web app you should be you will be able to customize in uh, very very quickly okay so with that let's quickly go into a uh, demo any questions so far okay so first of all look at the url so I am in the Azure, let me just increase the font size a little bit, okay? So I am in Azure portal, and as you can see, I am in the entra.microsoft.com. This is the Entra admin center. I have my, um, uh, you know, Azure AD portal here. And in that, what I'm gonna do is, I am going to go into overview and I am going to go into manage tenants, okay? That's where the experience of creating a CIM tenant uh, comes into picture or external uh, tenant comes into picture. As you can see, there are two options, workforce. This is your entra tenant if you wanna create another entra tenant for your organization or customer. This is, as you can see, it's clearly in preview. So that's how you start. And you say continue and you will give it a name and we can name it one. Okay, and by the way, this is your customer friendly name and this is your actual domain name. And, and this is important. This is you have to attach to a subscription. Okay, so this is your subscription and this is your resource group. So I am going to um use one of the resource group that i have here that's it at this moment this feature is in public preview so there is no charge for it and by the way if you don't have an azure subscription you can get a free subscription as well okay you can uh, get a 30 day free trial of this thing as well so you don't need an azure subscription just keep in mind that that's a different experience and uh, you can uh, go with that. And with that, you do a review and create. I'm not gonna create one because I already have created one, so let's go there. And once, okay, so once you create it, it will show up here. What you do is you go into Azure Admin Switch Directory, and it will show you a directory, and this is the one I have created, NZAPL CIM Demo. I'm gonna switch, so now my Azure AD 
uh, admin center or entra admin center is now showing my uh, CIM tenant, which is CIM tenant, which is a you know external ID for customer tenant. So this is uh, showing me here. Different stuff. I mean, you have overview, you have users. There are, I mean, you will see some users uh, here, all users. And uh, then you have device. So it's, as you can see, it's very similar. All of the capabilities that you had with Entra, they are at your disposal and you can uh, use those uh, to and apply those to identity that you have in, uh, in this portal, okay? So with that, let's go in and let's look at the um, experience of a user flow. If you remember, in Azure AD B2C, we have to have a user flow where we go in and uh, edit XML, then upload the XML. I know there were templates available, but still, I mean, editing XML is a bit tricky. You may, um, you know, kind of a miss one step and suddenly your XML is broken and things like that, okay? So that's where you will set up all the identity provider. As you can see, I have set up Google. Microsoft account is there, Android is there, Facebook, and your own, if you have a third party SAML, WS Fed IDP, you can add it there as well. And uh, then let's go back to user flows. And with the user flow, uh, let's uh, see what the experience is of creating a user flow. Okay, let's name it uh, And as you can see, um, there were multiple user flows in Azure AD B2C, sign up, sign in, uh, password reset. Right now in the preview, this is the only user flow there is, which is sign up and sign in. It's in preview, okay? Um, and then you will pick what identity provider you're gonna be using. I'm gonna be using Google and I'm gonna be using AML account. So basically what I'm saying is, the user can sign in with either their Google account or with their email account, but they will have to provide a password, okay? So let's see uh, what we're gonna do here is we are going to use the uh, display name. Uh, actually, let's do show more display name, and we are gonna do a postal code, and we are going to uh, do the country region, okay? That's it, and that's all you have to do. No XML, nothing, and at this point, if I create it, it's gonna create the, um, um, it's gonna create the uh, this particular flow, and I can test it out. So let's uh, create it. Okay, so the flow is created. Let's, uh, this is the new one that we just created. And the good thing is I can test this flow, like how this flow will run. So let's run it. Yeah, oh, sorry, I have to link an application. So let's link an application here. So let's attach this application. Let's do a selection. Okay, I attach this application. So what, what it means by is that you have to link an application. That application is now able to use this flow. That's uh, that you have to do. Okay, let's give it a second. It's done. So let's run this user flow and it will ask you certain things. We are just gonna accept everything and uh, we are going to run this user flow. So this is how it will look like. You know, you have your uh, directory name and most of the things you can customize. So what I'm gonna do is I don't have an account, so I'm gonna create one. I'm going to use my email address here. Okay, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna send me a code and it says we just sent you a code so i am going 
looking at my phone and I am going to paste this code here. Yes, so let's do next. So as the code is there, I have to provide a password. So let's get the password. I have created a password, so I'm just going to paste it here. And uh, and so that's what I did, and then I do next. So this kind of tells you like how this experience will look like if you are signing. So before you even have a web app, yes. So I, I don't have anything running, so that's why it gives me an error. But that's OK. I mean, that shows me the experience. What experience will, will I have? OK, I have an app that I would like to show you, which is attached a web app that is attached to this uh, uh, to a similar user flow. And we can take a look and see how that um, flow looks like. OK, so what I'm going to do is, by the way, in the meantime, any questions? So, so this is a web app. And what I have done is I have. Um, linked this web app to this user flow and all of these settings are. Here, as you can see, I have the client ID, client secret, all of that um, stuff that is set up. And look at this. This is a new domain name. You see, I mean, the uh, top level domain name. See, I'm login. So this tells you that this is a new service and that's um, what we are using here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this so you can see end to end experience. Give it a second for it to start up. And then we will go from there. And I am going to open a incognito browser. Let me bring it here. Okay. So uh, here it is. Let's open this now. So now this is the full experience. And uh, this time I'm going to sign in with Google. So I'm going to sign in with Google and it's going to ask me what is. So I'm going to use my Google ID, Gmail ID. Okay. And then I'm going to use the password for it. Next. And now it's going to ask me for a two factor auth uh, and I'm looking at my phone to allow this sign in to happen. Okay. And now it's asking me for details, so I'm going to say USA. Okay. And 74,000. Yes, stay signed in. And now it takes me, um, give it a second to come up. Yes, so this takes me to page. I have customized it. Basically what I'm doing is I am capturing all the claims that are coming up here. OK, so you can see and if this is a part of any groups or in any roles, you will see those here as well. Right now it is not. So. Uh, the point is that you can set up very easily your user flows, you know, in this one. You can uh, and by the way, uh, in the next session, we are going to see more customization like the I mean the UI of the sign up and sign in. The second part is how we can add custom claims. So you, that I will show you hopefully in the next session. In this one, as you can see, uh, we um, went through what uh, this um, and enter external ID for customer is all about. It's a new service preview service and what are some of the flows? So yes, feature parity is not there yet. There were more flows there. You have you have more option for customization, but as you saw, ease of use is there here. 
because you can quickly come in and without, you know, going into the XML and, uh, you know, the pain of editing that, you can just go in and work with the, um, you know, just the sub point and click and build a user flow and use it in your um, application. So with that, I want to open up for any questions that you may have. Oh, and by the way, um, I want to show it to you this. Um, so basically, if we go back into um, users, you should see all users. You should see this user pop up here. Remember we did an NZ HM01 when we were testing and this one we added. So it is coming from google.com. This is a native directory user because we use email address. So it's, you know, email address and password and things like that. So, and then you can apply MFA as well on these users, either individually or, or through here where we have the, um, you know, identity governance policies like, um, you know, um, basically ability uh, to um, protect, you know, have conditional access so you can protect the identity as well by creating conditional access rules and forcing uh, two-factor authentication on your user. So with that, uh, any questions, folks? So if there are no other questions, I will give everybody to their two minutes back and hope to see you uh, in a future session of um, Azure Power Lunch. Thank you very much.